you clicked on this video, the purpose of this video is just to talk about all the manga I've read from the month of November and hopefully give you insight on what things I found and that you may want to read also or avoid. Let's get right into it. Here's all the manga and manhwa I've read in the month of November and I'll be giving it a review using the My Anime List rating basing it off of its story, its art, its character, and my enjoyment of it, and then giving an overall rating. And just for the hell of it, I'm going to put it in a tier list of how I would recommend it to people. S tier being, I am going to annoy the shit out of you until you read it. A tier is just, you need to read it. B tier is just like, you should read it. C tier is like, if you're really bored, read it. D, I wouldn't read it. And F, just downright, don't even fucking look at it. I'll be putting a timestamps to all of them, so if you have a certain one you want to read, you should just click there, and let's just get right into the video. After reading Blue Lock, which everybody needs to read, I stumbled upon Al Ashi, and my god was this manga god. We follow Al, a countryside boy who leads his local school team with his gifted football sense, but fails during his local tournament. And he's now given an opportunity to compete for a spot in a youth football club, shying away from the typical school club we see in most mangas. We follow his journey as he learns what it means to become a real football player. This is where Blue Lock and Al Ashi are two sides of the same coin. While both being the best in the football genre, they're drastically different from one another. Whereas Blue Lock is a shonen action with amazing art and the idea of a winner-take-all approach, Al Ashi takes the more opposite approach and grounds itself with a realistic approach to football with teamwork, tactics, positioning, transitions, and high technical drills, and we get to see young players go through the drama that surrounds the sport itself. Combine all that and probably one of the best plot twists that still sends chills thinking about it, Al Ashi has probably cracked my top 5 sports mangas of all time with the likes of One Out, Ice Shield 21, Diamond No Ace, Blue Lock, and now Al Ashi. It's a must read, so I give it a 9 I put this bad boy in the S tier that everybody needs to read. How do you kill a target that can't die? Especially when he's a DILF! In Killer and Mortal Target, we got Big Dad, I mean Mafia boss Leonard Armito, who seems unable to die from any serious injuries. His killer, a young girl, Memento Mori, Calliope. Unable to kill her target and now having no place to return to, we get to watch Memento learn how to live a new life. A unique story full of warm but bloody scenes. Most side characters are generic, but these two are a great duo to follow. But that's it, because the story finishes in only 14 chapters. Overall, I enjoyed the story, but with 14 chapters, we can't expand much further. It's a good quick read, so I gotta give it a 7 and put it in B tier. A side character who always dies? Well, that sucks. You now becoming said side character? Well, fuck. Never Die Extra is based off an RPG game with thousands of potential endings, but every ending always have one thing in common. The character, Evan DeSheridan, will always end up dying. From yandere maids to just dying in the stupidest ways, a fan club was made in support of finding the good ending. Protagonist Yeo, who spent thousands of hours trying to find said solution, got the unlucky draw, and for reasons, I don't know there was none, has now become Kid Evan. Thankfully, this guy uses his knowledge to increase his chances of survival through weird training methods like killing slimes, finding talent, and making sure his yandere maid doesn't kill him. The art's hella cute. The story is interesting, and it's a manhwa I recommend. I rate it 8, and I place this in the A tier. We always wanted to be the protagonist of our world, or better yet, a world full of magic and martial arts. Well, not this guy! And is it tough being a friend? Ichiro found out early on, unlike some of y'all, that he was suited to be a supporting character rather than becoming the protagonist. And this man fully embraces the idea and goes tenfold finding the perfect protagonist to follow. After spending years and years, he finally stumbled upon the one, Ryuga and his three heroines. Just like every extroverted side character in every anime you've seen, this man acts out the wildest reaction and stunts to fit the side character role. Honestly, one of the most unique and fun stories I've ever read. Surprisingly, after doing this whole YouTube video, it has one of the funniest arts and coolest arts I've seen for a comedy. Its sheer wildness makes it such a fun story to read, but there is a weird part in future chapter that changes everything. 
well, I think they could have done it better. But in the end, I give it a 7. I still will give it a B tier, though. Standard of reincarnation? I wonder how this will start. Sheesh! He's just like me, for real, for real. Being born for the sole purpose of becoming a better hair than his cousin Cajun. Sounds like an Asian family. David did not have the gotcha gods with them, being born without a right arm. Yeah, practically sealed his fate. Despised by his parents so much that they sold him to his cousin's family to become a slave. 22 years passed of being abused only to be used as a training dummy. And David eventually surpassed Cajun with the power of will and determination. What should have been a bright turn towards his future actually led him to being accused of signing a contract with the demon only to rot in jail until his demise. That is, if it wasn't, you guessed it, reincarnated. He gets the body of a high martial potential body with the right arm and is followed by the spirit of a young boy who had previously owned the body. It's great that he's reincarnated into the same timeline years into the future for a great mystery, but I won't lie, while the mystery is interesting, I actually am more interested in one-armed Davin. Overall, it's a fine story, it has a huge upside. I have to give it a 7 for now though and place it in the B tier. I love me some stories of the experienced old man teaching old whippersnappers. From the Backwaters Dojo in An Old Man from the Countryside is our protagonist, Barrel Sensei, who has had aspirations to become a knight who would spread his name across the world, but has been stuck as a teacher at his father's dojo for the last 20 plus years. Thankfully, his old aspirations may come to reality because some of his pupils have become huge figureheads in the world, one of them being the head of the Royal Knights, making him now the special instructor for the capital. Add along some other pupils he's taught in the past, and you got an old man with a harem alongside him. Honestly, Beryl Sensei is just so cool, but the story is kind of generic and it's a little fast paced, so I'm not sure where the story will go. But watching him show off his veteran like skills and his pupils is just so fun to read. It's probably still a 7, but I'm still gonna put it in the B tier though. Looking at the cover art, Kari Hana Warin. You may see your typical delinquent and smart girl love cliche, but upon reading, my eyes get blessed each and every single chapter. Instead of beating around the bush like most mainstream romance manga, each chapter not only brings more meaningful progression between the male lead Rintaro and female lead w Waguri, but gives personality to who they are as people. Rintaro who struggles with his insecurities of how he's treated for his looks and Waguri for needing to be the perfect girl at a prestigious school. The problem between their love story? They go to separate all-boy and all-girl schools who hate each other's guts. But you can see why they also have to hide their relationship from meeting each other. Not only are the lead characters grow great to follow, the side characters have been a spectacle to learn as well. I'm a sucker for great side characters and god would you love to have such supporting people in your life. Friends who may not understand your problems at first but are willing to help is just beautiful to witness. And what caught me most off guard was a single chapter of his mother's love, who I thought was a foreigner blonde mom turned out to be just a loving mom who's willing to change her entire look to make her kid feel better. God, this chapter made me tear up. Besides the over-the-top school hate, it's just an amazing wholesome story to read. God, this manga was a gem, and I have to recommend to everybody. 9 and S tier. When you think of going to a fantasy world and the food they might have, you might be craving the monster meat or just exotic food that we can only imagine. Well, for our protagonist, Sung Woo, Sung -won. Sung -woo. who had to suffer 40 plus years stuck in a different dimension, is able to get the opportunity to return home. His reason? It wouldn't be fair if I'm the only one who tastes such lousy food, right? The man had to taste what is regarded as the worst of all dimensions, and with that, he gets to set foot back in Korea. With his culinary skills, not only is he capable of making delicious food with normal ingredients, but also have disgusting dishes that can fix people. While not having many chapters, my concern is that there really isn't much to go off of the plot. Considering it's supposed to be a cooking and action manhwa, but it's hard to justify all the action we're going to get when he wipes the floor off everything on planet Earth. 
I don't know what challenges he could face that would make it interesting. I still keep up to date just to see what dishes he'll make. So for now, I give it a 6. I gotta put it in the C tier. My charms are wasted on Kirwa Medica, a love story between the school's hottest girl and a monk. Mona, the girl from Osaka whose goal is to make every boy fall in love with her? against Kirua, a man whose mental patience is so strong due to following his temple's rule. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. The one who ends up cracking first, well, technically, is Kirua, who slowly ended up being friends, but it's actually Mona who falls in love with him. Unfortunately for Mona, future girls get introduced who may end up falling in love with them. While the romance is pretty average in terms of how many manga characters slowly get attracted to one another, Characters like Mona, Asahi, and Nanba who have great personalities who also work on improving themselves is always refreshing to see. It's a fairly nice read with some <coughs> over the top scenes, but still having some nice charming romantic scenes as well. I give it a 7 and place it in the B tier. Cute. Kawaii. This? Onichan to Mitsuko no Moto? This, this heals my tainted soul. With a 12 year age gap, we have an Onichan who takes care of his three year old Emoto triplets. Not only are they so cute, we get to see a dependable older brother. What takes the cuteness up to the next level is the author splits the chapter into two halves. The first being of them when they were young, and then time skipping 12 years to the future when the girls are high schoolers, but still having a brother complex. It's honestly just very kawaii. If you need a quick boost in energy with cuteness overload, you can't find anything better. It's an 8. A tier. <sighs> yeah, I dropped this shit. Sopa Waku Zero no Psycho, who, you, whoever the fuck. Yeah, what started as a generic main character who gets bullied and gets stronger, which I typically love, shows flaws from the jump. The emphasis of this world is equipment determines life. Okay, a little dramatic. And equipment frame. The talent of one makes you an ordinary person, which scales, allowing you to contract more weapons. Our MC can't equip any, making him bullied for being zero. The twist, he actually has a frame of 9,999, but he can only equip curse weapons. Weapons that make the owner pay a penalty, causing most people to avoid curse weapons. Pause. If 7 is what it takes to be a hero class, what the fuck is 9999? Second, if he can only use cursed weapons, how come he only began to start looking into it after years of bullying? To add on top of all of his suffering, he literally saved years of money, years, to buy a sword only for it to break because he can only use, guess what, cursed weapons. How does one, a sword take years of money saved up to find out it won't work? Just use a fucking knife, man, and find out. And even after saying, my emotions are paralyzed, I don't feel pain, my man still buys a sword, sneaks into a dungeon run to only fail at the first mob. By the way, how did he practice the blade when you literally said stab and you went for a slash? Yeah, I can see that practicing really coming to work, my man. Get a fucking normal job, be a chef, be an innkeeper, be something else, man. Why are you doing all of this? Jesus. Anyway, in typical manga fashion, man faces death scenario, curse weapon calls for him, it's a girl. Monster watches as he has a full 13 panels of dialogue about how she breaks the equipment system. He passes out as she kills the monster. By the way, they're in the city and no one's here? Boy finds more cursed weapons, they're all girls. Fucking trash. Shitty world foundation. MC doesn't even know how to fight. And honestly, I don't even think he has a real motive to do anything he wants to do. It's a fucking F. It is fucking a 3. If you need to look at hot girls, man, just porn's free. Next. In a similar fashion to one of my favorite mamas of all time, The Omniscient Reader, the novel's extra is a story that involves the protagonist, Hygen, being transported into a web novel. A novel that he created. As the title suggests, he isn't the main protagonist. That's left to all the other characters he made. He is an extra, to the point where he doesn't even have a, his own face. Yet. The cause? Didn't read the email carefully. Yeah, make sure you read your email before you sign away your novel for a remake. 
Speaking of remake, even though Hijin is able to slowly adapt to the world he's now in and trying to find a way back home, the plot has changed to make things more interesting. With such great and amazing art, great characters along the way, I don't want to spoil any more of the story, and I would highly recommend this to everybody. It's a 9 S tier. Boy, did this manga jabate me with the cover art. How does this look like this? Anyway, in I Become a Roblox in a world where only I can level up, well, being the number one player, he gets a message for the ultimate challenge and accepts talking to girls. <laughs> well, he proceeds to get Isekai into a game of Civ 5, but he's a city state. They have no happiness, and the fucking Aztecs are storming him in one more turn. Lucky for him, he has the power to analyze, have modern strategy, and have high base stats. And apparently, one of those stats being military power legit decides fights. It automatically determines who wins in a straight one-on-one -on -one fight having no prior fight experience needed. As long as you win by plus one, you outright win the fight. Combined with an inconsistent personality that switches as much as I do with waifus, and you got a real shitty story! What looked like a promising isekai turned to having a flaw fighting system with an annoying MC who can pull off anything he wants. I've heard that the light novel is actually really good, but for the manga, I wouldn't come back unless they revamped the entire story. Uh, it's a 4, giving it the D tier. What happens when you get two childhood friends who get bored? Of course they make the I love you game. God, my childhood was shit! Anyway... It's a game where whoever gets embarrassed first loses. Four years of this mindless game eventually causes both of them to start to have feelings for one another. But due to I die of embarrassment and a maiden's pride, we're going to be milking the story. Now, because of that, we won't know how long they'll milk the story using the same excuse. But it's actually somewhat of a nice romance story where they actually try to improve themselves. The story takes into account the fears of confession and what steps people might take to make someone fall in love with them. Change is hard, and actively working towards love is a nice switch up in most romance manga I've read. That being said though, I do have a slight gripe with the male lead, Yuki. This man literally talks to nobody but his family and her. I don't know, I just find it weird the story has so much involved with other people, but he actively doesn't want to interact with anybody for no reason. Just seems kind of weird and lonely. It's an odd factoid, but you know, it's still a good story to read. I give it a 7 B tier. So with all the reviews done, here's all 14 mangas laid out on how I rated them using the my anime list rating and how I put them in the tier list. You can tell I love Ao Ashi, Karu Hanawa Rin, and the novels Extra, while I didn't really enjoy Sabaku Zero and Rogue Lord. Now, you can always have your own opinions, and maybe you judge more, you care more about the art, maybe the character or the story more, and you know, that's for you to choose. Uh, but here is what I would recommend to everybody watching. Hi, thanks for sticking to the end of the video. Uh, this is my first long form content and I really hope everybody enjoyed it. I'm doing this all off script right now, by the way. Uh, if you liked or disliked any of the things I mentioned, please leave it in the comments. I'll try to interact. But I really want to give a shout out to all my friends who supported me on making this. And I hope to make future content as well. Uh, hopefully you'll guys see my December one and potentially my 2022 read. As well as hopefully, and I hope I still do this my one ounce documentary but um yeah thanks for sticking to watch and i really appreciate y'all bye